ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. For y'all who don't know who Brother Polite is, Brother Polite is a dusty hotep. Um, and I used to watch him. I've, I've, he's one of the ones I watched from day one. I remember him being on Sonetta TV. You know, that's when I used to like kind of follow some of the people in the conscious community, you know, just trying to learn more about consciousness and stuff like that. And so that is where he was introduced to me. And he seemed very articulate. He had these three wives. He was pushing polygamy and all that stuff. And everything seemed very, very interesting and innocent initially when they first came on the scene. He said he had written like 25 books. He spoke all these languages, you know, um, and he just seemed very, very interesting. So then about two years ago, news broke because he had been changing over the years. I've noticed a big change in him. When he first came out, he was always wearing, you know, the, the the, the dusty hotep garb. You know, he's dressed in these, you know, flea market dashikis. All the wives had afros. Um, you know, they, I don't know. They were just on their whole tap shit, right? Then as they got more fame, he was another one scamming, selling courses and books and repairing credit. And he had like some type of penny stock scheme he was doing for a while. And he had a bunch of celebrities investing in him. He was running with like, um, Metal World Police, um, Floyd Mayweather. And I noticed as they were getting more of the scamming money, His persona was changing. And that's when I checked the fuck out. Um, He started wearing Versace shirts. I said, well, damn. Not even five years ago, everybody was dressed in, you know, flea market gear. Now, you know, he's dripped down and head to toe in Versace and Marc Jacob, you know, Dolce & Gabbana. The wives went from wearing afros to, you know, hair weaves. The one wife, I think she got her body done. They all look, they got their bodies done. Um, Teeth fixed. Um... They went from, you know, always being covered up, classy, demure. The wife just looks like a fucking hood rat now. The shortest dress, ass always out, titties always out. I'm like, what is conscious about this? It's polite and his three sluts. They don't even come off like wives anymore. She's in six inch heels. She's no different than the same women that he tries to preach about. You want to talk about these girls on Instagram and how the black woman needs to do this and the black woman needs to do that. Look at the new hood rats on your arms that you call wives. Okay, so then it came out two years ago that he basically, because, you know, Mr. Polygamy was helping himself. He went from the original wives, then he was with a white woman. He was with some chick that was in the middle of her living room pole dancing with her baby and shit. Um, So he just started dating all these women. He went from three wives to like literally 25 wives or some shit. Every time I turned around, there was a new wife. So one of his new wives that, you know, bootleg Malachi York was messing with, she had a 14-year-old daughter. And supposedly the 14-year-old daughter, he wanted to meet up with her at the hotel, and they had sex. From what the reports were saying, he was denying it, but they found his semen in her panties. And I don't care how you slice it, there's no way that a man's semen would end up in little girl's panties. That, that that So for people to even defend him for almost two years is insane to me. But I just sat back and sipped tea. I didn't do any polite videos. So I'm going to just fall back, sip tea, and watch how this shit plays out. So I'm going to take y'all back down memory lane. I got a few clips I want to play for y'all here. So this was the initial arrest here of Dusty Polite. And he looks horrible without that head scarf on or whatever the hell. Hat. This was the initial story. Junior, also known as Brother Polite, to his more than 300,000 Instagram followers. Miami Beach police arrested Noack this week for alleged sexual battery of a 14-year-old girl. 
in a hotel room in February. Police say the alleged victim was the daughter of a woman he was romantically linked to. Once the evidence is produced um, that he is going to be exonerated. Uh, so yeah, not guilty, nothing else. According to the police report, Noack, a motivational speaker and author who lives in L.A., asked the woman if he could take her daughter to an after party at a club in Miami. The report states Noack took the teen to his hotel after seeing that the club was closed. Police say the suspect gave the teen alcohol and started dancing and touching the teen inappropriately, groping her breasts, inner thighs and buttocks. It goes on to say Noack tried to force the teen to perform oral sex on him. The teen allegedly passed out and woke up to Noack trying to make her throw up. This is the mugshot of 37-year-old Michael Nowak Jr., also known as Brother Polite. All right. So let me come back on the screen here. So that's the initial story of uh, Brother Polite. I got several clips here. So this is the part about the stuff being found in her panties. Damn shame. Uh, that's why your honor okay, right. asked the defendant to be present. I also am very concerned that the defendant has been essentially terrorizing the victim. I mean, the victim's 14 years old, and um, there's since, been a lot since, of since being since the arrest. Since the arrest, judge, she's been very communicative. On, uh, he's been very vocal on social media. On, uh, there's been videos of the victim drugged by this defendant leaked online. Um, your honor, on this case, we do have DNA showing that the defendant's sperm. Was on the victim's phone. I can have the defendant's sword. Okay, so now I can you unmute yourself. Can you raise your right hand. Do you feel from the testimony you're about to give in? So this was like um, during COVID, so that's why they had this. Um, you know, he wasn't in the courtroom. But yeah, he was using his followers to harass the girl and the mother. He was going live all the time, denying the allegations, basically harassing the victim. But you heard them say that they found his semen in her on her clothing. Truth, the whole truth, another but the truth. Yes. Okay, so you can put your arm down. Can you tell me your full name and your date of birth? Michael Eugene Nope Julia, born August. On the case yet? Uh, that's why you're on. Lessons in abundance. So now this is his dusty ass. Notice he's wearing Dior, a Dior headscarf to hide that forehead. Um, he threatened people when people were like questioning him, dragging him. He said he was going to sue everybody who spoke up against him because he was innocent. The mother and the daughter and the prosecution dropped every single sexual charge. So you say it again. The mother. The daughter, my accusers, in addition to the state, the prosecution, all agree they need to drop all of the sexual charges. So yeah, it's a victory, but it's bittersweet. It's a victory because I was facing life. No parole, no probation. Now you may say, how could this be possible if a minor was so-called molested and it was DNA evidence? And people say DNA don't lie. And I always said people do. Well, let's do this. The serologist, the, the expert that so-called found six semen stains, blessings in abundance. The All right. I'm going to show y'all some more clips here. Bear with me. So the night that this dust bucket was supposed to go to court, he threw a big party. This is how much of a just a, a, a narcissist he is. We're gonna go to his page. So he threw a, a big party, basically proclaiming his innocence in the club. I don't want to play too much of the music. Those charges dropped. This was a day before he got locked up. Bottles, I don't see nothing here healthy. I don't see no spring water, just liquor, Moet, a lot of white people. Where, where's all the hoteps? Where's, where are the blacks? 
Where are the black folks? You got on Fendi. This dude is a clown. Drip. Where's the dashikis? He's a clown. But black women, right? Black women need to care of themselves. Look at him. Assaulting somebody. That's, I think it's probably one of his chicken head wives. Oh, no. Looks like a spicy Latina. Dude is trash. But this is who folks look up to. So let me explain this real quick. Let me come back on the screen. The reason why the charges were dropped is because a mother did not want to put her child through, you know, going through a whole court case, having her 14-year-old daughter exposed to the world, especially being that they have been trolling this family, sending them death threats. So she wanted to meet him in the middle where he would still be charged with something and they were willing to drop the sexual um, charges. But obviously he was still found guilty. Even if they dropped that, they only dropped it because they were doing him a favor. He'd have to plead and, and take the seven years, which he did. But my thing is, if you're innocent, why did you not take it to trial? Because you knew had they taken it to trial, they would have peeled back that the onions and all of your, everything would have been exposed. Not just the sexual abuse of this child, but everything. They're scamming, they're scheming, all the nonsense that he's done over the years. His character is in the toilet. And that is why he didn't want to take it to trial. Typical Hotep Dusty, who came up off the community, him and his wives, and look how much his lifestyle has changed in less than five years um, of being on social media once the money started rolling in. You notice, there weren't a bunch of black Hotep conscious community people around him. They weren't bringing out bottles of spring water and alkaline water. They were bringing out liquor. It's funny that when these dusty hoteps are broke, everything is about making your own, you know, milk. Oh, all you need is a few almond seeds. Just take almond nuts, put it in a cheesecloth, add spring water and squeeze it in the cheesecloth and you have almond milk. It's funny when you're broke, that's good enough for them. But once these dusties start getting some fame and money, now we pop in Moet bottles and, and, and Hennessy. What happened to the almond milk, Brother Polite? What happened to the cheesecloth? What happened to all the herbs and, and the natural remedies? What happened to the malnecha and all the shit that you were talking about and the black woman is God, but you're slapping the spicy Latina on the ass. Dude is a clown. He's a clown. And the fact that people defended him is insane. So we're gonna go back and look at some more of his Instagram page before the dusty wives start trying to delete videos. This is him now, Ball Maine. Ball Main, down, head to toe. Armani Dubai Hotel. He's no longer staying. Now, I'm not saying he needs to be in the, in the projects and be a poor, righteous teacher, but look at him. TMT. Just arrogant. Talk to me nice. All this drip, we gonna need it. On the people's money. Now he's worrying about his body and working out and taking selfies, showing his chest. When he was broken and just a string bean, he never took any selfies. We didn't see what his pecs looked like. Here goes one of his little uh, hood rat wives. Drunk. Can barely walk. Ain't her name Aminette or something like that? Where, where is the alkaline water, sis? Where is the almond milk and cheese cloths? She looks like a, a, a typical stripper. Like an IG. Instagram thought. The same ones that they used to talk about. Maria, oh, yeah, he's trying to be a rapper, too. Let's not forget that. He started his own little rap career. Is he rapping about consciousness? Let's let, let's take a listen. Christopher, we acknowledge his wallet. No, he's not. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> Again, spicy Latina, where's your wives? These are his daughters. That's his oldest. Imagine if somebody did to his daughter what he did to that woman's daughter. Got you. Let's do it. Just trash. You got the nerve to have two daughters. All right. And this daughter's the same age as the girl. You get it in. She looks just like a baby. Hey, pull up on me at Ben Dog. He could never deny her child. Look at him. This is, this is the conscious, the conscious man. 
What does this have to do with, you know what I'm saying, with consciousness? Black women need to care themselves well, but this is what he posts. Okay. Here he is. Rolls Royce, Balmain. This is the conscious guy that people followed for years and defended. Let's watch what Umar has to say. A very popular brother from the conscious community. We were not friends. We were not allies. We were not associates. I really didn't care for the man. According to the report <laughs> that I'm receiving, this brother pled guilty to child molestation abuse, otherwise known as pedophilia. And the mother and the daughter and the prosecution dropped every single sexual charge many months later you are going to be sentenced to seven years in state prison to be followed by 10 years of reporting probation you will also participate in and successfully complete a mentally disordered sex offender treatment program allegedly he took advantage of this 14 did y'all peep that you're going to be forced once you get off probation you're going to get 10 years of probation on top of the seven years and forced to take a class on sexual abuse and mental disorders. So he can, you know, cheer that these sexual, you know, allegations got dropped, but why would they have him taking a class about sexual abuse? That's because he cut a deal with his fake Fendi wearing ass. 14 year old girl who was the child of the queen he was dating allegedly i don't follow him but you know what's sad if this brother is in fact guilty of the charges that were laid upon him and it appears that he is especially if there's six semen stains somebody said six semen stains were found on that 14 year old child six semen stains i don't know he will be able to reinvent himself you know why because you have had men who have done similar things who gave birth to some of our largest black movements and those movements are still running strong those men are still considered great black leaders although they molested underage black girls so unfortunately in this black america he will a very popular brother from the conscious community we were okay. not let me see if I can find the mother. Gosh. Yeah, this dude is sick. He is literally like the living embodiment of Dr. York. And then on top of that, he was like trying to cuss folks out. I'm talking about he's been cussing folks out on the internet for like a good six months now. Anybody who said anything about him, he was getting them flags, said he was gonna sue people. Damn lunatic. Last thing I'm going to address That's very quickly. quickly. This means that people are lying. If I if I was lying, you would be able to find something that contradicts what I'm saying. I made no plea, and there is no plea for child molestation on my behalf. I never plead to no child molestation, and I never made a plea in the first place. These are lies. Five minutes later. Okay, so Mr. Noah, <laughs> uh, the terms of the plea agreement are as what the prosecutor just stated, that you were going to be entering a plea of guilty to the two counts of aggravated child abuse and one count of deliberate, uh, contributing to the delinquency of a minor. You will be adjudicated guilty, which is a criminal conviction on your record. Do you also understand, sir, that by entering into this plea that it may subject you to involuntary civil commitment proceedings set forth in Florida statutes 394.910 through 394.931? Do you understand everything that I've said thus far? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to also advise you, sir, that you are going to be sentenced to seven years in state prison to be followed by 10 years of reporting probation. In addition to any of these special conditions of probation, you will also participate in and successfully complete a mentally disordered sex offender treatment program. These are lies. I'm glad they are roasting his ass on TikTok. Good job, TikTok. Now, this is the, the girl's mother. So we're going to listen to what she has to say. That her identity remain um, anonymous. So for that reason, she will not be stating her name, but she will be making a statement uh, regarding the where would it Where would it, it be? It should say victim, and then in parentheses, Noah. Nope, sorry. You see it when it says um, victim, nope. Okay, yes, one second. All right, you may unmute, ma'am. Good morning, Anna. Good morning. 
All right, so what I'd like you to do um, is, well, you don't want to give your name. So at this point, just go ahead and you can give us a an impact statement. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Michael Nowak. This is the first time I have spoken publicly about what you've done to my daughter and I. I have gracefully remained silent the last two and a half years. Two and a half years of pain, shock, disbelief, PTSD, constant nightmares, and daily triggers, trying to help my daughter heal when I'm not even healed myself. What you have done to my daughter, myself, and my entire family is inexcusable. You hurt us all. You made me believe that you were such a great man and you could do no wrong. You made me fully trust you. And for that, my daughter trusted you too. But the truth is, you're a monster, a demon. The very first time that I allowed you to be alone with my daughter, the very first time and you couldn't even help yourself. You told me you was going to be right back. We were going downstairs. We were going to grab food and take vacation pictures. You told me that you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with her about loving and respecting me as a great mother that I was and am. And I actually believed you. I believed that you were going to bring her right back. I thought you were gonna have this trusting conversation with her that you promised me. Her and I both trusted you. For a grown man to violate a child who trusted him, you should be ashamed of yourself. All right, let me come back on the screen here. Give me just a second. I have a few things to say. Um, Okay, so you guys just heard what the mother had to say, and I, I have to keep it real. Like I always tell you guys, it is your job as a parent to protect your child, okay? But unfortunately, you have a lot of mothers, a lot of women out here who, once they see somebody who's famous, who has proximity to fame, who has money, all common sense gets thrown out the window, and this is not me victim blaming. This is me keeping it real. There's nothing that a man that I'm starting a relationship with, this is not, it's not like she'd been dating Polite for years. They had just started dating. There's nothing that he needs to talk with my 14-year-old minor daughter about by himself, period. There's no reason that at any point in time he should have been left with your daughter who is not his child by herself. They have nothing to talk about. He doesn't need to teach my daughter about love, the Mayanetcha, none of that shit. Because a lot of these men, unfortunately, money and power corrupt some people where they don't know what to do with that and then they turn into sexual deviants because of the power bestowed on them by the people. So I'm not blaming her. We have to be smarter and we have to move smarter as mothers, especially single mothers, and this goes for, I don't care if you have a boy or a girl, because a lot of these dudes are out here, you know what I'm saying, going after young boys too. A lot of sons are getting molested and raped too by who the mother chooses to bring home. So this is just insane to me. This dude is always giving creepy pedo vibes. Now, let me get back on his wife, the main wife. She's been there from day one. I get grooming vibes from her. Now, there's a video that Jesse Lee Peterson did. He interviewed them years ago, and it's going viral again on social media. So let me pull that up. Where Polite is talking. Now, this is two of his wives. The one wife... The other one who said the big Afro who had one of his babies, I don't know what happened to her. I haven't seen her in years. But we're going to listen to what the what the young wife says. 
Hold on, real and quick. So She's going to kind of explain how she met Polite and Aminette. Now, when you look at them, you notice they have the afro. You know, he's dressed decent. Yeah, she's kind of whatever dressed. But they're a lot more demure. This is when she was starting her little hoe phase. Before she was wearing like dashikis and shit like Polite. So you see with the heels and the see-through top and all that stuff. But she still had the afro. They both did. But listen to this young girl. This is his third wife. No, I think she's the second wife. I don't know what happened to the other one with the big afros and the big titties. I don't know what happened to her. I ain't seen her in a while. <laughs> my, first, my first thought was right. natural because That's right. um, when I started coming, I was really young. So I actually was. How old were you in the um, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. And so. Did you hear her? When she used to come around them, she was 16, 17. Look at his groomer wife. Look how her eyes dart. Look how her eyes dart from side to side like a damn Chesser cat. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. See bookstore. that? You and see her so eyes? I Don't watch it again. To the, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. How old were you at the time? Um, I was like 17. Oh, okay. Six, I was 16, 17. My mother used to go to the bookstore. Look, they and both nervous. So I seen them she done together said too and I was just like really happy for them. She was um, pregnant and she looked gorgeous. Like she just was this dark African looking queen <laughs> with her afro, you know? And I was just like, wow, you know? So that was the first thought I had. I was just like, does she know, <laughs> you know? But yeah, that's pretty much the first thought. And then so he says, yes, she knows. And you say, okay, let's talk, the three of you? Or did you just bring her home? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what we did, we all talked. I, of course, got permission from my wife, Aminette, to engage her and present the idea to her. And then we all eventually talked after I spoke to her and we had a meeting. Are you guys like legally married or you just say wife? Oh, oh of course, bigamy is against the law, mm -hmm. but I have contracts with each of my wives. With the wife, okay. Were you surprised when your wife said yes to a second wife? Um, no, I wasn't surprised. What I would say is I would be surprised some years prior. Right. Because that definitely wouldn't have been her disposition. So you, you meet her and then what happened in your mind? You're like, this is a good one to be with? Well, actually, yes, because she, like they mentioned, she has been coming around to the bookstore for years before right. we even um, uh, consider her as a co-wife. So, uh, she said for years. So if she, if the young girl is saying she met them around 16, 17, they've been watching her for years, probably since she was 12, 13, 14. Okay. And you just see how much different she looked back then compared to how she looks now. So I don't want to play all this. Y'all can go look for it. Um, let me come back on the screen. There was another video I wanted to play. Let me see if I can find it because my whole screen just disappeared. So let me see if I can. Do, 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 do. Ah, this video. We're going to watch this real quick. Now, remember, that was a young girl that we just saw, right? So we're going to watch her now, years later. For me. Let me pause this. Now, this is the same young girl. Remember, I told you when they first came on the scene, they all had afros and dusty flea, flea market dashikis. This is her now. She got a, you know, wig, lace front, sexy top. Learning something new is like, it gives me a high. I was attracted to him because of the information that he could spit. Okay. okay. Now, us as females, like, I want an intelligent man who has dreams showing off his Dolce & Gabbana who knows himself and wants more for and wants more for himself his children and his people and talk. that's who he is that's okay who I do you really think talk to me nice listen, do you really think black females in America would conform would, would conform Right. To some, really some old think? Negro. She can't even strum two sentences together without stuttering, stumbling. She's a brainwashed idiot. And it's not her fault. No stuff, like, come to on, like, man. No, well. No, nah, it must be real. Hey, no, let's get up out of here, baby. Yeah, I got you. I'm he's here. He's different. I'm telling you, like, he's different. For me. All right. 
at this point, I think he's pimping them all out. The the wives, I think they're just having, you know, sex with random celebrities for clout and everything else. I mean, the fact that she slipped up and said she was underage when she met them, and Aminette, the head wife, said that they've been watching her for years, but she said she met y'all at 16, 17, so how long is years? So I, I wouldn't be surprised if the creepy wife of his is also a groomer and was helping to facilitate different things because, again, she's gotten very accustomed to the lifestyle that he's been able to provide her, you know, via scamming and scheming and all that shit. So she don't want to lose that lifestyle. So at that point, she's willing to let him do whatever. She's willing to let him, you know, smash whoever, bring whoever into the bedroom because she wants to maintain that lifestyle. I watch these people from day one. So this is not me just being judgmental. No, I remember when they first came out on the scene. They were very smart, articulate. You know, she claimed she wrote books and she was running businesses and they were teaching women how to cook. And they were really trying to show young people that polygamy was okay. But now fast forward, all that was just brainwashing technique. That's why when I see a lot of these dusty hoteps sit here and talk about, oh, polygamy, polygyny, whatever the hell they want to call it, just say you want to fuck a bunch of females and get the fuck out my face. Stop trying to run game and trying to make it sound sexy and, oh, in the Bible it says, yeah, in the Bible. We're not living in Bible days. It's funny that these same men, they hate modern women and want modern women are whores and they don't know how to carry themselves, but then they also want the same modern women benefits. They want women who are dumb, who are willing to put up with anything. You know what I'm saying? They want you to get into these polygamous relationships, polygynous, whatever the hell they call it, relationships, so that way they can fuck and suck and get sucked and do all this. But let you want to have a side king. Let you want to have some peen on the side. It's an issue. So it's very funny. The whole thing is just misogynistic. It's just bullshit. And it's sad that so many young girls fall for this. And I get why young girls fall for it because they feel like, you know, you know, they can have somebody take care of them. It's the best of both worlds. They can be sister wives, but it never happens that way. Somebody eventually gets jealous that somebody's getting more attention. This is just about sex. It's not about building a family. It's simply about sex and stroking these dusty dudes egos. Because a real man doesn't need to sit here and run game and have multiple women. Because if you're that secure and you're all that, then why can't she have another man on the side? And their whole thing is, well, it's different. I don't want my wife, you know what I'm saying, taking different peen. But it's okay for you to stick your dusty peen in several different coochies. Make it make sense. You're still creating soul ties. So young girls, please learn from this and stop letting these dusty hoteps, especially the ones from the East Coast, run game on you and act like you know their, their sect is the next thing, the best thing since sliced bread. It's really sad what has happened to Polite. This entire family, this entire situation has been nothing but a circus. But like they always says, you know what I'm saying? The same ones you see on your way up will be the same ones that you see on your way down. And he needed to be humbled. He got very arrogant over the years. Like I said, he can't even have a conversation with that wife without showing that he's wearing some Dolce & Gabbana shoes. This was a man that used to walk around in Jesus sandals preaching to people about making almond milk and the marinette and the black woman is God and all this shit that he used to talk. And now he has to let you know that he's wearing the white man's designer shoes. He's wearing the white man's Versace, the white man's Fendi. You know, the same white devil that you used to preach against years ago. These guys are full of shit. They say all this to build a fan base. And then once they get money, they act like the same rappers that they used to diss. The, 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 the wives are dressing like the same Instagram thoughts that they used to talk about. We're in a polygamous marriage, but we carry ourselves with respect. And this is my husband and my king. And it's about being modest. What is modest about Aminette now? I see her titties more than I see mine. She looks like a pass around. And this was a woman who used to carry herself with respect when she first came online. But again, money does not change people. And I'm tired of people saying that money changed him. No, money just exacerbates who you always were. This man was always a pervert. He was always a bootleg Dr. York. He was always a dusty Hotep R. Kelly. The money just gave him more options. Now, instead of 
picking on and, 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 you know, picking and being a wolf in sheep's clothing in the hood. Now he's able to do it in Dubai. He's able to do it in Mexico. He's able to travel and, and be in LA and Beverly Hills running the same dusty ass game. And I wouldn't be surprised if more victims come out against him. But again, this is why I also say as women and as mothers, you have to be smart. Stop bringing your children around people because you're busy trying to chase the bag because you want proximity to fame. If brother polite was dusty polite on the block and he didn't have the money and the fame that he accumulated over the past five to 10 years, that mother wouldn't have checked for him. It's funny that everybody who gets around him now, all these females are all willing to be in a polygamous relationship. They're willing to be the side chick just because of his proximity to fame, just because he has money. Some of y'all willing to sell y'all's daughters out because there's no way in hell a guy that I'm dating is going to be left in a hotel room, in any room alone with my daughter. It's insane. But I will give her props for at least believing her daughter and pressing charges and going through with it because many of these idiot women would have blamed the daughter because they wanted to keep up the lifestyle. It would have been the daughter's fault because the mother wants to be next to Polite. So at least she did do her due diligence as a mother and press charges on Polite and take it all the way as far as she could. But I get her not wanting to traumatize her daughter more by exposing the daughter, exposing the daughter's name and everything else. At the end of the day, y'all can sit here with this dusty mush mouth bullshit. At the end of the day, there's no reason for a grown man semen to be anywhere near a young girl. I don't care if it was six semen spots or if he come to river. There's no reason where it should have been anywhere near a 14 year old, especially when he's a father to not one but two girls. So I don't feel bad for pro-life, good riddance. And again, if he did nothing wrong sexually, why after when he gets out, he has to go to all this sexual counseling? Y'all heard what the judge said, clear as day. They did him a favor by dropping the sexual assault charges so it's not tied to him. But that didn't mean that he's not guilty. He thought he was the living embodiment of Dr. York. And now he's doing time like Dr. York, but unfortunately he only got seven years instead of life in prison. But Dr. York was raping boys and girls. And there was even an old video of Polite almost shaming a Dr. York victim, a young black man. He was shaming him. Even saying it doesn't matter if he, you know, molested, you know, tons of girls or boys. It's about the message. What kind of shit is that? No, it's not about the message. Not when the messenger is corrupt. Fuck the message. If you're out here messing with babies. So I, I'm just, I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked because he's gotten so arrogant and full of himself over the years. I've just sat back and watched. But it's really sad, you know what I'm saying, the stuff that he's done. It just does not make any sense. You have grown women throwing their fucking, you know, panties at you. Just because he's running around with Metal World Peace and all these celebrities and he has all this money, he's in the club. Why are you not sitting here messing with these grown women? Because it's not about that. It's about power. He literally was taking on the spirit of Dr. York. So he's a sicko. And he's where he should be. And I feel no ways whatsoever. Good riddance. Good riddance. If y'all are liking this stream, please hit the like button. Please hit the like button. Somebody said, talk about Danny Masterson. We could talk about him too, but what does that mean? Y'all always want to bring up a, a random white person. One thing about this channel, I don't just call out black people or black men. Okay, so y'all can bring up Danny. We posted videos about Danny. Danny's another loser who got 30 years in prison, rightfully so. And I think because of everything that Danny Masterson has done, this is probably going to be the final nail in Scientology's coffin. Because Scientology has covered up a lot of bullshit over the years. And they also need to be held accountable. But right now, we're not talking about Danny. We're talking about Polite. Y'all do the same thing anytime people bring up R. Kelly. What about Steven Tyler? What about Elvis? No, what about Polite? What about R. Kelly? We're talking about them right now. I don't talked about all these white men before. Right now, we're talking about this Dusty Hotep. Who scammed the people. 
who gained the trust of the people and then just went crazy. He's a shell of the person he was when he first came out. I used to enjoy, I used to watch him all the time. I enjoyed the things that he said. I learned a lot from him in those early, in those early days. Him teaching folks how to make almond milk. Learned that from him. Now he's in the club popping bottles. And he's not even around his own black people. It's a shame. It's sad how money and fame and just a little bit of notoriety go to these people's heads. And it's not just polite. It's a lot of people on social media. They allow just a little bit of fame. That's why I told y'all before in my stream about Fresh and Fit. You can always tell the motherfuckers out who never had shit. They were never popular. People didn't really like them. They weren't cute. You know what I'm saying? This goes for the guys and the girls. You can tell the ones who just, they were, they were never that guy or girl. Because as soon as they got a little bit of internet fame, it went straight to their head. You couldn't tell them shit. If people liked you and rock with you, if you really had genuine friends, this internet thing is not going to change you that much. It's not that damn serious. Because you're going to still have real people around you to check you and to keep you humble and to let you know when you did wrong. But that's the problem. People want a bunch of yes men around them. People to stroke their ego and tickle their twat and make them feel good. And then when they get into these situations, now they want the people to come and rally around them and support them. Nah, don't ask for our support. Go ask for all them white people to support you. Go ask Dolce & Gabbana and Versace to support you. I checked out about five years ago. Once I seen, once he moved to LA and he started renting Rolls Royces and mansions and trying to keep up this weird facade and then the wise were co-signing it, I was done. I checked out. And I ain't watched him since. So brother Pedo Light can kick rocks. I don't feel bad for him. And I think that damn lady, Aminette, should be investigated too. I wouldn't be surprised if she was grooming girls for him. Remember R. Kelly, the person who was fishing for girls for R. Kelly was London on the track's mom. But y'all's not ready for that conversation. She was going to the mall and getting girls and grooming them and preparing them for R. Kelly. A lot of times these pedos, don't, they don't work alone because he knows if he goes out and tries to get these girls, it's going to cause a lot of attention. But if he can send the wives to bring down their guard, why not? They want to keep their lifestyle. They don't care. I don't trust none of them. I don't trust none of them. I think they're all trash. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.